Without further ado, welcome Ella Swain. I'm uh, the world's most clumsy, clumsy person, so I might just fall off the stage. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, first, before I get started, I just want to say I want everybody to give it up for Justin and the Render Atlanta team and all the volunteers. Okay, he could be up here talking about it if he wanted to be. <laughs> uh, 
but anyway, uh, whenever we brought that up, I was like, what are you talking about? Racism only has two elements. It's just peanut butter and chocolate. Uh, and I, you know, like I said, I need three things that are usable while they're in um, but he said, yeah, but they make different products, like Reese's makes other stuff. Um, so yeah, we're, <laughs> we're going to talk about Reese's today. Um, so we'll start out with the original Reese's cup. Perfect in every way, right? I guess unless you're looking at it, um, in which case my condolences. Um, but how could they possibly make the Reese's cup better? Well, they changed the shape to pumpkin, and I don't know, maybe it's the basic bitch in me, I don't know, but something about it being pumpkin shaped just made it immediately better. Uh, <laughs> and I know what you think at this point. How could they, how could they make the Reese's, or the pumpkin shaped Reese's better? Well, they added pieces in there, and Reese's with pieces is even better than regular Reese's, and I don't want to hear it from anybody, don't have me. Um, anyway, let's get back to uh, why we're here. Uh, so, you can think about like the original Reese's as your content or your HTML. Uh, that move and that change of shape from uh, a cup to a pumpkin as your style in CSS, and then adding the behavior, um, or adding the pieces is like adding the behavior or the JavaScript. So, to focus on first on our content, uh, from a web development perspective, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to shit on JavaScript devs a little bit. And I, as I said, I am a JavaScript dev, so uh, don't, don't attack me. I'm, I'm like everybody else here. Um, <laughs> but from a web development perspective, we'll talk, we'll start about with semantic, well-structured, HTML, sorry, I'm gesturing my hands, moving the mic away from my face. Uh, but we want to ensure, first and foremost, that all of our content is going to be available. Because, um, you know, some people have really sort of connections or they use things like assistive technologies, um, as you heard Homer talk about earlier today. Uh, and there's even stuff like web crawlers that aren't going to see all the extra stuff that you've peppered in your uh, application. They're only going to really see uh, the content. And also, users don't care about your text yet. Um, you know, make sure that it's, uh, you're doing things so that they can see it first. And doing, using some integration email makes that happen. And then we'll make it pretty. We'll add some CSS, uh, soften the edges a little bit. Uh, and CSS is extremely powerful, right? Like, it's, you can do a, a ton of stuff with it, but you really should only manipulate things visually using CSS. I know there's a content property, but sometimes those like assistive technologies and web crawlers and stuff won't see that. So if you need to go to a page and there's some con there's some text in the content and you're trying to translate that, that might not get translated. Um, but we're adding this after we do our uh, HTML. So if our CSS doesn't load, that's okay because people are still going to be able to use our application. So the next thing we'll do is we'll add the behavior, we'll add the JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is amazing. Like I said, I'm one of you. Um, <laughs> uh, and they can do a ton of stuff that HTML and CSS alone just can't do. Uh, but and this may come as a surprise to some of you. Some people don't use JavaScript in the browser because, you know, either their connection is slow or uh, maybe they're using assistive technology with a really old browser and they just haven't updated it because they know, like, that their assistive technology isn't going to work with that. Um, and so, yeah, I challenge you to turn off the JavaScript on your own website and see what happens. Uh, um, so why should we use progressive enhancement? Uh, well, it allows you to use the best tool for the job. Uh, so you're leaving your content to your HTML and your style and your CSS and your uh, behavior to your JavaScript. Uh, it also gives you a solid foundation to fall back on. Uh, so as you're adding complexity, you'll still have that core contents readily available. Uh, 
It's also easier to maintain. You can probably change something like a typo in your HTML uh, without introducing a bug into your JavaScript. Also enhances accessibility and accesses, uh, enhances performance. And I know you might be thinking, great, but like, this conference is called Render ATM? Like, where is the React? Well, here's the React for you. Uh, ultimately, <laughs> React is less accessible, uh, it's less performant, and it's less robust than just using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as needed. I'm sure that that all really just comes as a surprise to nobody. Um, but, like I said, some people have JavaScript turned off and stuff, and we could be really excluding people that use these assistive technologies. Um, and I know you're like, but no, my React. I know, I know. I'm not saying that you can't ever use React. Uh, I mean, if you only have like a simple content site and you uh, don't need any of that extra stuff, why not just do it in HTML and CSS? Unless you need something to put on your portfolio, in which case, there's no shame. You do you. Uh, but let's go back to the beginning. So let's now think of progressive enhancement as something that we can use in React instead of just focusing on HTML and then CSS and JavaScript. Obviously, our HTML is in the JavaScript. So, um, so I like to think about progressive enhancement in the way that Jeremy Keith described it. And he did a talk about uh, responsive field day in 2015, and that's on YouTube. You should go check it out. Um, but so instead of thinking about prioritizing content, we can think about this first step is your core functionality. So boiling down your application into its core features uh, that you absolutely need. And you know, for brevity's sake, we can just say these are things like collective content and basic navigation. So we're building that foundation of just must-haves. So then Jeremy uh, goes on to explain that his next step in thinking about how to build a web application or building a web application is you, building that core functionality using the simplest technologies available. Um, so what's the simplest thing that Reese's could do and make a, another product change the shape? Obviously it makes it more marketable this time of year. Um, I fall victim to that marketing. Uh, <laughs> but, so in React this could be as simple as just using semantic HTML and using as much semantic HTML as you can in your JSS. And so we're talking about you know, anchor tags for links, buttons for buttons. Like Homer said, don't use a span, don't use a div, uh, use a button. Uh, and then segmenting your content into sections. But this is still an issue for people who have JavaScript turned off in their browser. But thankfully, we have things like progressive web apps, uh, and things like server-side rendering and static-side generators uh, they can give us that without absolutely needing JavaScript to turn on. Uh, so we're doing as much work as we can to ensure that we're getting our stuff to as many people as possible. So we're not having to worry about as much, I won't say we don't have to worry about it, but we don't have to worry as much about people using like IE 11 or uh, running their your website on an actual potato. Um, we don't really need the JavaScript, we don't need CSS, we have a way to get that basic information to all of our users. So, okay, going back to the analogy, what's next? I add the pieces again. I love that drop animation in Keynote, I'm not going to apologize for it. Uh, <laughs> so now we can think about the pieces as enhancements. So we're going to enhance on that core functionality that we've already put forth by adding new features. And so we can also think about these new features uh, as you know, things like media queries. So if your user's browser can handle like the latest and greatest CSS stuff, uh, or changing the font face, if your user's connection can handle uh, downloading the extra font face, go ahead and do it. Uh, we can also think about it as other nice tabs, like Ajax calls, which seems like not a nice tab these days. It's kind of required, but um, again, some people can't, can't do that in the browser. But 
think about things like Ajax calls or some fun machine learning stuff. Like I know Game One Board has a make or not thing that runs in the browser um, that determines whether or not somebody is Nick Cage. Uh, that's a fun ad. So now let's, we can think about progressive enhancement as this move from our core functionality and then enhancing to infinity. You can enhance to your heart's content knowing that at the end of the day, your users are going to be able to access and use that core functionality you put forth at the beginning. So, to wrap this up, this talk's short. I didn't want to keep y'all too long. Uh, plus, I have candy. I want to get that too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to talk about Reese's right before lunch and not give y'all any. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, these days we may have our HTML and our JavaScript, and, um, but we can still think about developing our applications in the progressive enhancement way. Uh, but like I, like I said before, knowing at the end of the day, as many, we're reaching as many users as possible with our stuff. That's it, that's all I got.